Hi, this is Judy Godier, and in this video, I am going to highlight some of the finer points of my Hearts in Wisconsin quilt. I wanted to show you some tips and techniques for piecing the curves and for cutting them, so much so that even a beginner should have success with this quilt. For this quilt, you will need these templates, and you'll need to cut them out with the scissors that is not your fabric scissors. Make sure that this square measures one inch by one inch so that you know that these will be the correct size. Start out by grabbing a smaller rotary cutting ruler. This one is 12 and a half inches, or if you have a nine inch one or nine and a half inch one, that works well too. I have a fun little Japanese strawberry print, and I am going to cut my paper template by layering two layers and I'm going to lay this on there and then I'm going to put my ruler right on the edge, right on that edge. And then I'm going to cut. The idea is not to cut your template down when you are cutting so that it's whole for every single time you need it for cutting. You should probably print several of them. If you notice that you're starting to shave the edges, you're going to need to replace it with another one. Now I've repositioned this so that my curve is on the right. It might be different if you're left-handed. And I'm going to use this ruler along the edge here to stabilize the template. And then I'm going to move it along as I'm cutting. There is no value in speed with doing this. Absolutely no value in speed, but there is value in accuracy. Now I'm going to reposition this again. And cut the other edge. For each of these hearts, you're going to need four of template number two. Now for template number one, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to stabilize the edge of it. I've actually starched my white fabric because it makes it easier to work with. I'm layering two of them because you need 100 of these for to make 25 hearts. Remember that starching does not keep fabric from stretching. It is not an astringent. It does not keep fabric from stretching. It just makes it easier to handle and work with, and it makes the fabric stiffer, but it does not keep fabric from stretching. So keep that in mind. Don't get a false sense of security and think that your fabric won't stretch because you've starched it. All right, now, I'm going to reposition this. I've repositioned this so that my curve is on the right. If you're left-handed, you might find it easier to do it on the other side. And I'm gonna do the same technique that I used when I cut the other curve. Some people might find it easier to use a smaller, smaller rotary cutter blade, the really tiny ones. That actually works quite well too. Now I'm not gonna get my fingers too close to that blade. And you also may stack more than two at a time if that's what you're comfortable with. Remember, it's not a bad idea to print off more of these templates because you will probably end up shaving them off a little bit. Okay, now let's go over the tips and tricks of piecing curves. I have pressed a small crease in the center of my curve. How did I find my center? I gently folded it like this, went over to the iron, and with the tip of the iron, I just made a little crease. You could do that with a, your little wooden stick or your finger press, um, but be careful, this is a bias edge. So be very, very gentle and very careful Handle this like it's a piece of delicate pie crust. 
And the same thing goes with this piece. You just gently fold it in half and finger press or use the iron, just the very tip of the iron and create a crease. Never ever piece a curve with the concave piece on top, never. When you do that, all you're doing is stretching the living daylights out of this piece. Rather, the convex piece must always be on top. And this is how you will start. Here is your template number one. Here is template number two. This is how you're going to start. I'm going to actually put a pin here. These edges need to be well approximated and lined up. And I'm going to place my pin and then I'm going to go to the sewing machine. This is how you should start out. This is how it should look. Okay, never ever, ever sew with the concave on top of the convex. Convex must always be on top of the concave. This is how I teach my students. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the first couple of stitches, first couple of bites into this. Now this is copyrighted because I have it in a book that I've written for CNT Publishing on how the curves are sewn. And this is unique where you actually put this up at a curve. See how this is at an angle? See how I'm holding the fabric up at an angle? It's not flat, it's at an angle. And I'm going to use a wooden skewer and I'm keeping these edges here well, well approximated. And I'm not going beyond a fourth of an inch. I'm doing an exact quarter inch seam. And remember, there's no value in speed. So I'm holding a wooden skewer in there as well. And I'm helping to guide the fabric along with the wooden skewer. That way, if you're using a wooden skewer, you're not using your fingers. If you're using your fingers, you're going to stretch it. So I want you to see how, how well these little creased edges, the, the crease in the middle is going to come together just perfectly. And once it does, you know you're pretty much home free. All right, so it is coming together perfectly. Now it might seem to you that making however many, a hundred of these for this quilt will take forever, but each time you do this, you're going to get faster and faster at it. I'm just doing it super slow because I'm doing it for instructional purposes right here. But this is going to make this convex to concave be absolutely perfect without stretching anything. I didn't have to stretch it to get it to fit. This is how it should end up right at the end, just like that. I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and show you how you now will have a perfect curve. So here we have two perfectly curved pieces. So we have one half of the heart done. And then we have to have two more for the other side. But you can see how nicely that turned out. There are no puckers. And I didn't have to stretch anything. And then if I square this, this should be squared to five and a half inches and it will be a perfect square. So never use the other technique of putting the concave on the top. Always put it on the bottom and the convex goes on the top. 